Hello and welcome to my channel Becoming Bev. This is part two of my trip to Africa, which is really part one. I was so excited about the safari section of the trip that I went ahead and did that video first. So this is the rest of South Africa. Good morning. <laughs> Our trip started off at Simon's Town on Boulder Beach. My friend Kevin Coca from the YouTube channel The Hungry Outlaw told me about a Netflix special that he had watched called Penguin Town. Simon's Town is basically a breeding ground for penguins, and if you catch them during the right season, you see them there with all of uh, the babies and nesting. It was pretty fascinating just to be sitting out there on the beach and the little penguins just come waddling by. And if you were brave enough, you could actually get in the water and swim with them. The water was pretty cold. South Africa is heading into their winter right now. together before and she's just a joy to travel with. She has the biggest heart and teaches me to be a better person and teaches me to be even more empathetic toward people. So Diane, thank you for joining me on this trip. It was so amazing to share these experiences with you. And Diane and I were walking back from dinner and we look up the street and we're like, what is that? And we realized it was a family of baboons just walking down the street in Simon's Town. It's cool to get to see animals that you don't get to see every day. Like we're used to seeing cows and horses and things like that, but not baboons and penguins. Hi, I see you have a baby. There's a little baby. I have to pause here for a moment. I'd like for you guys to caption this particular photo. <laughs> Driving down the road, here's an ostrich. <laughs> We had a rental car the whole time that we were on this trip and from Simon's Town we drove to the Cape of Good Hope. Oh my god, it was beautiful. The views at the Cape of Good Hope were spectacular. We hiked up to a lighthouse. The lighthouse itself was actually pretty short, but it was placed on a really high cliff. South Africa is one of the most beautiful places I've ever traveled to. Next we drove to Saldana Bay. We had a week in a beach house there and that was the quiet part of the trip. We did a little bit of kayaking.
some beautiful sunrises and beautiful sunsets. We made friends with the next door neighbor, had a hot game of Scrabble with him and his wife. <laughs> we stopped for lunch one day and we were surprised and treated with watching the kite surfers for a while. It was crazy how they were just sailing across the water and they would do these turns and come up all the way out of the water and then back down again. From Saldana Bay, we drove back to Cape Town just for a couple of days. Many of you know I have this crazy bucket list with a hundred things on it. And one of the things on my bucket list was to walk on the boom sling in Cape Town, South Africa. The boom sling is an elevated walkway in Kirsten Bosch Botanical Garden. I always get a little giddy and excited when I'm getting to check off a bucket list item and this one did not disappoint. They had some of the coolest trees that I've ever seen in my life there. I tried to hike Table Mountain, but it started drizzling and it was cold and it was a pretty steep hike, you know, walking up this rock stairway basically. So we hiked part of the way up, took a couple of photos and decided to save that hike for another trip. From Cape Town, we drove to Saris on our way to Africa Burn. Now this was one of the prettiest drives that I've ever done and just full of surprises and it was kind of cloudy and gloomy and a little ominous and made for some really cool photos. Now Diane wanted to attend Africa Burn and if you don't know what that is, Africa Burn is Africa's version of Burning Man. Basically it's a big art festival that celebrates full self-expression. A whole city is temporarily set up. Everyone comes in for the week and then the whole thing is completely taken down. And the idea is to leave no trace behind. Diane and I were walking around one night and we thought it was kind of funny. Like Diane said, I feel like I'm on the set of a Star Wars movie when they land on one of those planets and all those crazy creatures are walking around. And we got a good laugh because it really did feel like that. We were very blessed to be part of a camp called Uvalante. 
which was part of a charity in South Africa that helps teach young South Africans. Um, it introduces them to music and being able to DJ and things like that. I wanna just read a little part of what was posted at our camp. As we come to play in the sacred lands of an ancient South African nature reserve, we are mindful of our impact on the earth and mindful to all beings who share it with us. We enjoyed the art, the people watching, and some of the most incredible sunsets I've ever seen in my life. We left Africa Burn a few days early and headed toward our safari. On the way to the safari, we saw a hotel that had an elephant excursion. So we decided to take, you know, a half hour out of our day and go experience this elephant excursion. We met three elephants who had been orphaned when their adults were poached. Their handlers raised them and fed them 46 liters of milk every four hours for months. They roam freely and as part of this nature reserve most of the time. They do a couple of these excursions a day. Our next stop was Bukela Game Lodge, and I did a whole video about that experience. If you haven't seen it yet, please go back and watch it. It's one of the coolest videos I've ever made. It was cute when we first checked into the Game Lodge there. The guy who checked us in told us the story that earlier that day there was a buffalo in our room and he had to run him out before we got checked in. And I knew he was just messing with me. So I, um, got a picture of a buffalo laying down and I photoshopped it onto a photograph of my bed. And when I saw him later that day, I showed him the picture and I said, oh my God, you were right about that buffalo. He was back in our room again. <laughs> he looked at the picture and he looked at me and then he just like, it took him a minute, but he just busted out laughing. And he took the picture around and showed it to everyone there on the staff. So it was good for a giggle. We stopped off to do another hike uh, to a suspension bridge. And this was another really beautiful hike. And one of the things that I loved about this hike was it literally was where the forest met the ocean.
would have loved to have done some kayaking through these canyons, but this time I just got to stop and watch other people do the kayaking, but it was gorgeous. This was our first exposure to rock rabbits, or I guess they're also known as rock hyrex. They're kind of cute and they have these funny little facial expressions. We made our way to Plettenberg Bay. Now Diane does this thing called trusted house sitters. She gets a free place to stay and takes care of your pets while you're gone and you get a free pet sitter. So Diane had lined up a pet sit in Plettenberg Bay for these two giant, I think they were Russian terriers, but they were the, some of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. They were fun to hang out with. We were walking on the beach in Plettenberg Bay and I noticed these little squiggly, turny, twisty trails in the sand, like lots of them, like a little road or something. Anyway, so I got to looking a little bit closer and apparently they're like these little sea snails that just, you know, crawl along the sand and when the wave comes in, they burrow themselves down into the sand. The host from our pet sit told us about a little secret beach that they had been to earlier in the week and there were quite a few seals in the water. After a couple of attempts, Diane and I found the beach and when we got there, you know, we had to smile when we saw this little sign and the sign said, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And we thought how appropriate because it took us a couple of tries to find this beach. <laughs> <laughs> we watched in awe as the seals just played in the surf and, you know, I guess they were uh, hungry. They were eating the fish that came up in the surf, but jumping up out of the water, it was just fascinating to get to stand right there on the beach and watch. While we were there, we met another dog who looked like the ones that we were dog sitting, but not quite. Anyway, this dog was having fun going right up to the seals that were practically washing up on the beach. We got a kick out of watching him play. We stopped off for lunch and we met this waiter named Mandy. Just the biggest smiling happiest person I've met in a really long time and so we talked to him a bit and he was telling us about uh, his art so he's also an artist and I'm gonna put a link to his Instagram account in this video he said he gets his inspiration from the sea which made sense because he works as a waiter at this seaside restaurant it was fascinating to meet him and to hear his story. He works six days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I don't know, it just seems like a lot and he just seemed to have, you know, be so thankful for his job there. Just very inspirational. Now, while we were in Saldana Bay, um, the week before that, we, Diane and I were at a restaurant and we met this guy named Philip. So uh, we kind of made friends with Philip and he kept up with us a little bit throughout the trip and gave us some good helpful suggestions. When we were leaving Plettenberg, uh, Philip says you should stop by, you know, the airport and I'll show you my airplane. So we made a little quick stop to say hi to Philip again and to get to see his airplane. 
Our next stop was what they called the world's largest over the water zip line. So Diane and I decided to take on that adventure and to go zip lining over the ocean. And we saw more rock rabbits. <laughs> we drove to the southernmost tip of Africa, of the whole continent of Africa, not just South Africa. And it was fascinating. They had a stone map there of the continent of Africa, which I teased Diane got to walk all over Africa. And it's where the Indian Ocean meets the Atlantic Ocean. And we felt like it was a beautiful way to spend our last night in South Africa. It was a beautiful drive back to Cape Town, just as pretty as like the sea cliffs in Hawaii, just beautiful. Again, it was kind of fun. You're driving down the road and you know, what I thought was a big dog in the road or something turned out to be a couple of baboons running down the side of the highway. And just like that, our trip to Africa was over. <laughs> now the last day driving through Cape Town, I took this video, it's a couple of minutes long. So I've shared like a lot of the really beautiful things about Africa, but South Africa is not without its problems. And I wanna share some of that with you just to give you an idea about what's going on over there. First of all, South Africa has a 34% unemployment rate. And if you talk to the locals, they say that number's off, it's more like 40%. To give you a comparison, the US unemployment rate is 3.4%. So with a 34% unemployment rate, they also have a very high crime rate. Most of the houses had security systems and fences and neighborhoods had guard. Our first Airbnb that we stayed at, we had four different keys to get into the house. So that's pretty sobering to think about such a high unemployment rate. Another problem that they have because the unemployment rate is so high, they have a very high crime rate. We were told just don't be out after dark and you should be fine. And that was the case. We pretty much had ourselves tucked in every night before dark and we didn't go out walking around. So we didn't have any issues the whole time that we were there. You could absolutely see with a 40% unemployment rate or a 34% why you would have a high crime rate. Now, the next thing that we saw were miles and miles of these townships. We would call them slums. These houses were made of pretty much anything that they could throw up, uh, corrugated metal or old boards or anything that you could find. Some of them had electricity, some of them didn't. What we noticed was maybe, you know, for 50 of these little shacks, there would be a couple of porta potties in the center of them. It was very sobering to see poverty at that level. I think South Africa has one of the biggest uh, gaps between middle class and poverty. And this is just my opinion, but there were things that made me think that South Africa, as far as prejudices and equality go, are probably 50 years behind we, where we were at. They also haven't done a very good job keeping up with their infrastructure as far as their electricity needs go. Apparently about five or six years ago, they started doing doing what they call load shedding, we would call rolling blackouts. Every house for about nine hours a day has no electricity. And this includes the businesses. So they send out a schedule. So maybe one day you'll be without electricity from six in the morning till 10 in the morning. Then it goes back off at two in the afternoon and comes back on at six in the evening. And then it's off a couple of hours during the night. This affects the homes and the businesses there. And I thought to myself, how do these companies stay in business? Uh, Diane and I went for pizza one night, but it was load shedding. So the employees were sitting outside on the steps just waiting for the electricity to come back on. It was fascinating and I, like the people that have money just end up getting generators and installing solar panels. But the ones who don't are just stranded without electricity about nine hours a day. So I wanted to share 
those things with you. And again, South Africa is absolutely one of the most stunning places I've ever been in my life. I was in awe, but they do have some problems and I just wanted to make you aware of some of the problems that are going on there. I'm gonna end my video with that. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching. I have a big surprise coming up in my next video, uh, diving back into van life again. And I can't wait to share that with you. Thank you for being here on the journey with me. Thank you for watching.